Hello everybody, let's take a look at how to create an orchestrator runbook. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and fire up the runbook uh, designer. I'm going to make sure I launch it as administrator. Again, uh, in my last module I talked about uh, running it as administrator always, and so just make sure to do that. I'm going to drill down to my runbook folders, and as you can see I've already got a few folders created here. Uh, however, I'm just going to create a new one for us uh, during this module called test, and I'm going to create a new runbook and rename that to test. Now in this runbook we're going to use a very simple example. I'm going to show you some of the basics about how to build a runbook, starting with an initialized data activity. Uh, so the initialized data activity allows a runbook to gather some data at the very beginning, uh, and we're going to add a custom parameter here. We're going to rename that parameter to computer name, a very common type of piece of information that you would want to feed into a runbook, and we'll rename this activity to get computer name. In the description, we'll just say this activity gathers a computer name for the runbook. Click finish. So now I've got a com get computer name activity. Uh, as an example for this module, let's use a run program activity right here under the system section. And as you can see, when you hover over one of these uh, arrows on an activity, you get a different cursor. Now if you just click and drag over to another activity from one activity, you get a link here. Now if you don't see the text link, uh, you might need to go to Options, Configure, and say Show Link Labels. I like to enable them just to kind of see a friendly name for what's happening in the uh, runbook. Now this link is actually more than just a simple link. It's called a smart link. So if you're looking in the TechNet documentation for uh, what this is, you're going to look for smart links. So I'm going to rename this to run program just to kind of indicate what my next activity is uh, based on this link. Uh, and there's different criteria, uh, include and exclude criteria that you can use to restrict the conditions under which this smart link is utilized. So for example, the default is typically always going to be uh, the previous activity returns success. So if uh, get computer name returns success, then it's going to run to the next activity. And we'll see how to customize that in just a second here. I will also point out that you can customize the color and the width of the smart link. So you can kind of get a very nice visual understanding of the flow of your runbook. So I'm going to expand the width to two and uh, change the color to green just to have a kind of a go light uh, for your eyes as you're kind of scanning it. Now in this run program activity I'm going to visit the properties and you can see I have a few different options here. I have a computer that I want to run a, a program on, a program path, parameters, and so on. So for the sake of this example I'm simply going to run C Windows System 32 IP config .exe. Uh, this is a pretty safe bet that this is going to work because we're specifying the full path to the executable file. Uh, we're not relying on any variables, um, but obviously when you're building runbooks you're typically going to use variables. Um, so just realize that this is an example. I'm going to rename the activity to run IP config and then I'm going to give a friendly description just as a best practice for my colleagues to say this activity executes ipconfig.exe on the specified system. Uh, there's some other parameters you can set up here like run as, um, wait for termination of the program, execution mode, priority. Uh, we're not going to change those for now. You can also specify an alternate icon if you want. Uh, at this point it's not really necessary so we're just going to click finish. And as you can see we now have this activity that's going to run ipconfig. Uh, we're also going to specify that we want this to run on our orchestrator uh, management server. So now that we have this run uh, IP config step set up, the next activity we're going to do is a um, notification, and we're going to use the system event log to log the execution of this process. 
So drag the event log activity out to your runbook, create a new smart link over to it. And we're actually going to do something a little bit different with this one. We're going to say if ipconfig returns a failure instead of a success, then execute this, uh, this activity over here, this event log activity. And as a best practice, I'm going to go down here to my options. I'm going to change the color to a red color and expand the width to 2. And I'm also going to go back in and rename it to IP config failed. And in the description field, I'm going to say uh, this uh, smart link will execute if ipconfig fails to execute successfully. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create another send event log message activity. And this one is going to be for successes. So I'm going to click and drag a smart link down and say IP config success. So this smart link executes if IP config runs successfully. And I'm going to go to my options and make it some sort of green color. Make the width 2 just so it's visual. So there, now we've got a couple of different activities. Uh, one if it fails, one if it succeeds. In the properties here, I'm going to say Scorch1 is the, the computer I want to log the message on. And I'm going to say Program Succeeded in the uh, event log message. In this one over here, I'm going to su say the same thing, Scorch01, and then Program Failed. So now we've got these two uh, event log messages that are going to be logged in the case of a failure. There's one final thing that I'm going to do before I go through and test this. I'm going to go to the properties and I'm going to actually change the computer name to the computer name that we gathered during the initialized data activity. So the way to do this, the way to subscribe to data that's further up the data bus is to right click on a field that you want to use the subscribed data in, say subscribe to publish data, and then select the activity that you're going to get the data from and then the property on that activity. So in this case, it's going to be computer name. So now you can see that we're, we've got this uh, kind of link looking thing saying get the computer name from the get computer name activity. And that's the computer that is going to execute the process on. So now that we've uh, finished creating the runbook, we can go ahead and test it. 